Hi, my name is Joe Curto, and we specialize at my shop in SU carburetors. This video is a quick tutorial on the different carburetor bodies and how to change or remove the bushings from each one. Uh, this early setup is called an HV3. It's a bronze body and there are no bushings at all in the in the casting. Uh, they just they just ran the shaft right into the body. Uh, worked okay. Uh, this considering this is from about 1938, uh, but these do wear. Uh, the next one is called an H2, an H type. This is specifically is from an MGTD, uh, but it's probably the most common carburetor from post-war uh, uh, English production up to about 1962 or 63. Uh, your MGAs have them, uh, TR3s, uh, 104 Healy. It's, 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 it's the common carburetor from the time. They have bush. It's an aluminum body with bushings, but... One of the reasons for this tutorial is to tell you that these bushings were put in when the body was cast. So the only way to get them out is to physically cut them out. If you go and pull them out or try to press them out, you're going to damage or destroy the body. Uh, so in a, in a little bit, we'll show you how we cut these out and you can salvage the body very nicely. Uh, the next carburetor is an HS. Now this was the type used on uh, MGBs, MG Midgets, uh, Volvo P1800s, Volvo 544s, the whole, this was the carburetor that they produced during the, from the early 60s up to probably the, the, the late, late 1960s. Now this particular one is an MG Midget, or a Spitfire, or also a Sprite, as well as Minis. Uh, these ran, had no bushings in the body, uh, they just run the brass shaft in the aluminum. Uh, surprisingly enough, the, the shaft is the sacrificial piece, which is brass, and we see some pretty big steps uh, of wear spots on them, but the bodies have much less wear. So if you were in a field situation where you wanted to put shafts in, you can, chances are, get away with putting a new standard shaft into this body because they do not wear as much as a body that had a brass, shaft, brass bushing and a brass shaft. Uh, that would be like this is your MGB HS4. Uh, you can tell that by the diagonal um, mounting flange. And in looking in the, in the hole, the, you'll see a brass bushing. Uh, surprisingly enough, when they put the brass bushing in and they're running a brass shaft, the bushing wears more than the shaft does. I'm not sure why that is, but I'm sure that somebody knows. Uh, again, these can be brought back to new with the system that we have with uh, putting bushings in. Uh, this carburetor, the HS, was then replaced by what's called an HIF. Some guys call them HIF. The HIF actually stands for H as in carburetor, and IF is integral float chamber. The float chamber is built into the bottom of this carburetor. Now this is one of the few carburetors that SU made that had a removable bushing from the factory. You can go in there with a drift, push it out, bang it out, press it out, and you can buy a brand new bushing that's just like the one you took out, which the factory bushings were a rolled, was a split steel bushing with a Teflon lining on the inside. Uh, actually... The original bushings, if say you were doing a 72 MGB, 
a lot of times the bushings are acceptable because this carburetor not only had the Teflon in the bushing, but they also used a seal on both ends which kept the dirt out of the bushing. So if you were doing a set of HIFs, you, you can possibly get away with just changing the shaft, or if you have to, you can buy new bushings, same type that was in here. A uh, uh, few, few companies sell them. They come in the major SU kit out of England, and it's just a matter of pressing out the old one and pressing in the new one. Uh, that is, this is the one carburetor that you can safely take a bushing out without machining it. The next carburetor, which showed up, it's called an HD, and that's because the jet assembly had a diaphragm on it, uh, and these were used on uh, Healy 3000s, early Healy 3000s, um, XKEs, Mark II Jaguars, uh, on and on and on. Now, in the 2-inch version, which it was referring to the butterfly and what this is, you could possibly have three different bushing arrangements. You could have a brass bushing that fits tight to the shaft. That You'll see those on uh, 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 XK150Ss. You'll see that all the time on the inch and three-quarter version, which were on the Jag sedans. But again, going back to the two-inch one, uh, if you were dealing with a, a 4.2 E-Type or a BJ8 Healy, they use a rolled Teflon bushing. It looks like a little postage stamp, uh, and the factory refers to it as a PTFE bush, uh, which is chemically is some extremely long name I don't remember. Uh, that bushing is kept in position with a narrow steel ring on the inside, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch wide, and on the outside attached to the shaft is a is about a quarter inch wide collar, spring collar, and that keeps that bushing from walking in or out. Uh, the third way that this, this carburetor body came, because they, they utilized this carburetor up until the 1970s in Europe uh, on XJ6s, and other cars uh, is they went and they actually fitted the same type of rolled steel bushing that you find in the HIF. So HDs, uh, from a matter of observation, if you had like a 3.8 E-type with HD8s on it and the shaft was steel, and this is just an observation on my part, but when I see a steel shaft, I'm it's 99% it's that it's going to be running the steel shaft and the brass bushing. Uh, and then they have a little cork and kin cup seal arrangement. Uh, when they went to the, to, the, to, the, to the PTFE bushing, they omitted any of the outside seals, uh, and you would, you would just renew the Teflon and put the shaft back in. The shafts generally do not wear on that, so that means that if you're doing a, uh, planning on doing a job on the weekend uh, and there's no machine shops around, you could very well get uh, a lucky break and just replace those bushings. The shafts will generally be clean, and then um, you can proceed with your work.